Yep. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and uh, continue. Uh, we are now moving into the deer, and uh, let me just tell everybody that uh, we got a number of uh, commissioners uh, and others that uh, are trying to get on an airplane at 7 p.m., and uh, we're, we're running out of time. And so uh, if we could uh, move this all along as quickly as possible. Uh, our first, uh, for the record, Tony Wassley, Department of Wildlife. Uh, the first deer hunt we have here is 1107, um, the youth hunt. There's two things I'd, I'd like to say before we dive into this. Um, the first is that you know these these season dates you know we'll strive to have parity between the youth hunt um, and these archery muzzleloader and corresponding illegal weapon hunts with the uh, resident and non-resident hunts um, and also including the 1235 hunt the non-resident guided hunt and then uh, not necessarily with respect to the youth hunt but as we move into some of the other hunts 1331 etc. Uh, just like to, to throw out for consideration the idea that uh, last year we had a fairly significant reduction from the department's recommended quota. So a lot of the season structures this year are in anticipation of uh, potentially having higher hunter density in some of these areas. Um, some of our postseason surveys this year have revealed um, exceptionally high uh, buck ratios, post hunt buck ratios. Uh, at this point, I would guess that we're going to see the highest post-hunt buck ratio observed since we've been doing aerial surveys uh, in mid-70s. So that's just one of the things to consider. It, it truly falls in, in the realm of uh, social, not necessarily biological, but it does overlap into biological when we look at whether or not we can achieve you know, harvest or, or get the harvest that we want to see our, our buck ratios where, where the objective is. So that said, uh, we can dive into the, uh, the youth hunt. Really, the only change that you'll see reflected through here is uh, is a slight change in the date for the uh, archery opener. Um, the only justification really there is is uh, we've been trying to go to standard dates with respect to opening and, and closing, kind of a something that's divisible by five, and uh, it just it, it's easier for people to work with five twenty. 20, you know, 30, 10, 5, so we just to try to clean that up. We went to an August 10th opener on the archery. Um, there are some, some other uh, changes in units uh, 192, 194, and 196, and then 195, uh, actually, that's the same as last year. Uh, and those go back to traditional uh, season dates based on input. That's the bulk of the uh, recommended changes with respect to the youth hunt. Okay, uh, bring to the commission, uh, uh, Commissioner Drew. The only comment, maybe suggestion I might have, and it fits into what Tony started off with, is in trying to synchronize these with uh, some of the adult hunts, perhaps we table 1107 until the end so that we can just match in any changes we make on any of the I others. I was going to su suggest that because uh, I know we got some comments on the archery hunt uh, start date uh, uh, and not and chopping off days and not adding them to the back. So, okay. Go ahead and move to the next one then. All right, the next hunt is the resident mule deer antlerless any legal weapon depredation hunt 1101. Uh, within one mile of the Baker Ranch properties. Okay, bring back the commission. Any questions? Seeing none. Uh, public. Seeing none. Oh, come on up. Joe Krim, Persian Cab. We just had one comment on that archery season. We'd like to see it go back to, to the um, start of August. I mean, if you chop a few days off on the end, that's fine. But we'd like to see it go back to that 1st of August. We didn't think that moving it 10 days was going to affect the horn growth enough. And with the limited success that your archers have anyway, the August the 1st gave them a little more time. So that was our the vote at our CAB meeting was to move it to August 1st. Hey, Maureen, did you have a? I have a comment on the 1101 hunt. Um, Oops, Mike. Um, there's a typo in the special regulations. It has 2009-2010 hunting seasons. It's supposed to be 11 and 12 because we had the hunt last year. So we need to fix that. Okay. Uh, we 
you back to the commission. Any questions? Okay, I need a motion. Move to approve resident mule deer antlerless any legal weapon depredation hunt 1101 as presented. Oh, you want to go ahead and make the change to the? Uh... Yes, with the clerical change over the typo of 2011-2012. Okay. Second. Second. Okay, I have a motion. Second. Any uh, questions on the motion? Seeing none. I'll go ahead and call for vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any none. Motion passes. The next hunt is the resident mule deer antlerless any legal weapon hunt 1181. Um, just want to point out one thing here: the uh, unit grouping for the third hunt there that says 101, 102, and 104. Uh, that 104 was always a portion of 104. That earlier today you adopted as a boundary change, and that would be 109 with with the adoption of that boundary change. So it would be 101, 102, and 109. Okay, um, questions from the commission, Commissioner Rain. No, thank you. Has any, uh, have come up with any, what, what, what data do we have to support an antlerless hunt? Uh, at previous commission meetings, the commission repeatedly requests carrying capacity data or any other data to support it, and so to date, I've seen zero information that supported a doe hunt. I was hoping there was something new. There were catastrophic wildfires in both Area 5 and 6 last year where the biologists from, from both those areas uh, requested a doe hunt be recommended this year with the hope that uh, they can stave off any unnecessary uh, winter losses or um, allow the vegetation in those areas to, to recover. Uh, the justification provided by the biologists in Area 10 um, had more to do with uh, continued uh, low recruitment values in that population and uh, a, a large population estimated at approximately 25,000 with the hope of having a relatively small quota to meet um, demand uh, and last year the last year that we had a doe hunt first choice applicants numbered 328 in, in that area so it's a uh, in area 10 at least different than, than five and six the justification this year so maybe you clarify that on so we're tr on specifically the area 10 portion is so we're we have low recruitment and we are instituting an antlerless hunt to improve a, lo a state of low recruitment uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's the justification um given that the most aggressive uh harvest doe harvest that we've ever seen in the, in the rubies um, took approximately 5% of the population. Um, I, don't, I don't believe that's necessarily adequate to elicit a density dependence type response in, in the population. Um, but I would say that uh, uh, a harvest of 1% of to meet the demand being exhibited by first choice applicants in a population that's estimated at, at 25,000 um, wouldn't be, couldn't be argued against from a biological perspective. But uh, so there is. I'm, I'm trying to struggle. Why? I and mean, the only reason that I could ever see why we'd ever reduce deer nut antlerless numbers which, or increase ta antlerless tags is to reduce the total deer number in the area. If you think there's too many deer, if you think there's not enough forage for those deer, and they're going to starve to death, that's acceptable. Anything else, I have yet to see it acceptable. So we're not thinking these deer are going to be starving to death because of this. There's too many of them. I mean, that's what we're doing with the elk. We're going to, we got a plan. We got to get those levels. The plan came up for various reasons. I mean, you got we got harvest objectives. We don't have any harvest. We don't. Excuse me. We don't have not harvest objectives. Population objectives. We don't have any population objectives. So therefore, I, I'm, I'm just trying to struggle with it. Where's our science behind killing these doe? Is there any science? I have not yet seen it. Please show it. To I, me. I guess we could look at a. 30-year history of, of female harvest uh, in the rubies and, and turn that question around and say, do we have any science or any documentation that um, has shown doe harvest to be detrimental to the population? And in five of the six highest years of doe harvest, the subsequent year, the population's increased. Um, we're talking about levels of harvest um, that are immeasurable. Um, if, if we need to 
Well, I, I, we can go over the data, um, but I guess I, I haven't seen any evidence that suggests that the, the level of doe harvest that we've ever had in Nevada has been detrimental to any of our populations. Actually, it's been the contrary. It's one of the most counterintuitive things in, in wildlife management to understand how fewer does could actually produce more fawns. Um, so I, I mean, we, we could talk about it, and you and I have discussed it several times, and I think it's one of those issues that we may just have to agree to disagree on. Commissioner uh, McNinch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so let's look at it from the standpoint of the low recruitment side. Um, does the department, do you, have concerns with the, uh, have there been health issues with those does? Are we reaching a carrying capacity? Would uh, poor doe health because of, you know, potentially pushing carrying capacity start resulting in low recruitment because we don't have healthy moms having healthy babies? It, there's something going on um, in that population. As we look around Elko County this year and we look at the fall fawn ratios that we've observed in adjacent areas, um, the majority of the county is doing exceptionally well. Uh, the rubies are not doing exceptionally well. Um, they're well below long-term averages for recruitment values. Why that is, um, you, we can really only speculate. We did, uh, two weeks ago, um, we put 124 callers out on bucks, does, and fawns. Uh, last year, we had almost 100 callers in that same area. We're learning a lot as we go. Um, if, if you're asking me to make a, um, scientific justification that we need to have a doe harvest in Area 10, I don't think I could, I could say that we need to have a, biologically we have to have a doe harvest in there. Similarly though, I'm going to look at Area 10 and, and an antlers harvest in Area 10 of the types of levels that we're likely to have, I mean, and, and I'm going to say there's no way that, that that level of harvest is going to have a negative impact on that population, period. Commissioner Drew. Thank you for the description on some of that, Tony. I think it clarifies things, at least in my mind. Um, in terms of the Area 10 hunts, why, why are the season dates on that different than your others? The other ones run October 10th to the 31st. That was a uh, early, mid, late split um, to accommodate hunters. And Area 10, it's, it's kind of... Uh, I guess problematic in that it's the state's largest deer herd representing approximately 20 percent of the deer in the state, but you get two scenarios. You get the scenarios where hunters will see 30 and 40 bucks a day and no hunters, or they'll see 30 and 40 hunters a day and no deer. Um, you don't have a, a well-roaded network to exploit four and a half million acres. It's, it's those that have horses or mules or strong backs that go up into the wilderness and those that cuss each other at the few congested location areas. So the justification put forth last year by the area biologist was that we could perhaps uh, address some of the congestion issues by further distributing hunters over three seasons instead of two. Okay, any other questions? Mr. Chairman. Right, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, we've been over this road before and I'm opposed to this doe hunt absolutely opposed to it. I don't I don't see the justification for, for killing a doe. It just it's like me going to a farmer and saying, I'm gonna go ahead and increase your herd by killing your cows. Now maybe I'm wrong, I'm not a biologist. Okay. Uh, any other comments from the commission? One more. Okay, go ahead. Um, we had, uh, I think it was a two-year study going on in the rubies, and uh, we had uh, proposed last year to use some heritage money to do predator control in the rubies, and because of this study, we weren't able to do any predator control in the rubies. And I'm thinking maybe there was some stress on them does that caused them not to reproduce as, as much as as much as they should have or you thought they should have because the habitat's good there's no doubt about that right the habitat's good I don't know we're doing a lot of habitat improvement work out there and if we don't need to do it somebody ought to stop us It, it, it's scientifically proven and 
time and time again, there's lots of studies that when there's stress on them deer herds, there's no recruitment. I mean, it's it's way down because of the stress. And uh, well, you know where I stand. Okay. Any other commission comments? Okay. Um, have we taken this out to the public public comment? Any uh, members of the public have a comment on the uh, doe hunt? Jason Peterson, for the record. Um, I'm not exactly sure why it is a lot of people don't tend to get online and do some research, um, but there are numerous, numerous, numerous studies out there. If I take 10 bucks and I give them 100 does, when it comes time around that breeding process, if there is an excess amount of does, they're not going to have that drive to breed as heavily. It, 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 there are numerous, numerous, numerous studies. I mean, this is all I do is read about deer. I love them so much. But it's proven time and time and time and time again. If you take does, that is a healthy part of management, you will absolutely, positively increase the herd. I, I, I honestly wish I'd known if this was going to be a topic that was going to come up. I could have printed out a hundred different studies from all across, whether it be whitetail, mule deer, elk, any type of argument, you're, you're going to increase the herds. I'm not saying you need to go out and wipe out all of them. Obviously, if you take out all the does, there's nothing for them to breed with. But if there is an excess amount of does, the bucks are not going to be driven as hard. They, they, it's, it's just not, a, I mean, it's, it's, it's mother nature. So that's all. Thank you. Okay, any other, uh, <coughs> any other public comment? Okay, bring back to the commission looking uh, for a motion. I'll try a failed motion. Okay. I'll try a motion. I'm sure it'll just succeed. <laughs> I move that uh, we have no, that uh, on any legal weapon hunt, 1181, we have uh, no open seasons this year. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Uh, on the uh, resident mule deer analyst uh, in legal weapon hunt 1181 uh, to have uh, no open seasons. Uh, any questions? I'd just like to clarify, to clarify my justification Again, one more time briefly. Um, you know, we cannot scientifically justify the antlerless harvest. It's one of the worst things that we do. If we're going to do it, fine. Show me some documentation. And we've looked at this. We've had it. The deer committee went over it. There is no documentation. There is no real reason for it that makes any sense. Um, if anybody has any data, send it to me. Show it to me. You know, we talk generally carrying capacity was the biggest thing. There isn't. We have no data on carrying capacity to show us that. The it, it is crazy to continue doing this in our current de dire straits with deer. There's other things happening, and we need to figure out what those other things are. Slaughtering a doe is not going to solve our deer problem. Thank you. Okay, uh, got a motion and a second uh, on the floor. Uh, go ahead and call for the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Nay. Okay, did you get that? Three, five. Okay, motion fails. I need another motion. I'll make a motion. Uh, resident mule deer antlers any legal weapon hunt 1181 be approved with the one uh, change of 101, 102, and 109, not 104. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any uh, discussion, uh, uh, any questions on the motion? Hearing none, uh, go ahead and call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, 5 3. Uh, motion passes. Jeff, check to see who the three were. I didn't really know who they are. <laughs> this one, make sure you didn't have to do a poll. The uh, next hunt is the restricted non resident mule deer uh, antlered any legal weapon hunt, the 1235 hunt. And as per our previous conversation, perhaps we should uh, skip this and um, after going through the individual hunts, pair this up 
with with those dates. Okay, that sounds like a good idea. So that jumps us to uh, 1331, resident and non-resident, mule deer, antlered, any legal weapon hunt. Um, few changes, again noted in bold, um, 111 through 113 late, um, added uh, nine days to the beginning of that consistent with the other early late splits um, and that actually is is for uh, three of those uh, white pine hunts um, and also uh, on the top of the next page 131 through 134 late and then um, 192 194 and 196 and 195 uh, the consistent with the other California interstate hunts, um, trying to strive to have some consistency on those uh, interstate hunts along the California line. Um, 221, 223 late, also adjusted back, um, consistent with the early late splits through the rest of the state. Um, Close the uh, late 241 through 245 and extended the uh, the early season by that by that amount that's pretty much it okay um, bring back to commission any uh, questions comments on uh, hunt one three three one okay seeing none take up public any public comment on uh, the resident, non-resident mule deer antler uh, hunt one three three one. Ray. For the record, Ray Sawyer, White Pine County. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, the, the ones that we're gonna address um, are areas. Of 111 through 113 late, 111 through 115 late, 121 late, 131 to 134 late, and 221 through 223 late. Um, one of our biggest concerns is the elimination of the um, 245, the 241 through 245 late hunt. With that being eliminated, with the Silver State, the Heritage, the Partnerships in Wildlife, um, we're, we're concerned that the pressure from, from that unit, a lot of those hunters like that late hunt, that they're gonna move into these areas. Um, we would like to propose that we remove five days from the department's proposal and have those late hunts start October 21st and end October 31st. Um, we think it's it, it's getting into the pre-rut, and it, it's just we we just we're just concerned that, that we're, we're going to kill some of our big animals, and that, that you know I mean I guess that's what we're here for is you know we all want to want to hunt a big animal, but we don't want everybody killing them all. Um, we're we're really concerned about the possible pressures um, in those areas, and we we'd like to to just have that end. Um, at the 31st, that's where the junior tags end on the 31st and keep it consistent with that. Uh, I got a question. Uh, yes, sir. What, um, I guess I'm a little confused. If, you know, I can understand that if we eliminate the two, two area 24 late hunt, we're gonna have more people applying for these late hunts, but that that's only gonna affect the odds of the people that draw that tag, and so we're not, uh, where, where are we uh, it, impacting? It's, it, it's really not the, the the people applying or anything like that. We're we're, we're concerned about the, the 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 trophy tags that are given out in the state, the, the the heritage tags, the partnerships and wildlife tags. Those people usually, the majority of them, seem to wait towards the end of the hunt, um, into that rut pre rut area, to to you know for the bigger bucks to start wandering out where they can get an opportunity to hunt them. And we're just concerned that. You know, um, these units are going to be affected with, with added hunting pressure on top of whatever the quotas are, and um, you know that that's where we we stand. We're just suggesting that 
that we just eliminate it. it just just take five days off, end it on the October 31st when the pre ruts start. And okay, Mr. Wait, Chairman. Wait, could, I'm sorry. Could you give us those areas one more time? I only got a couple of them. Yes, sir. Uh, area 111 through 113, Area 114 and 115, Area 121. Area 131 through 134 and 221 through 223. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, bring back to the commission. The uh, oh, oh, sorry. Come on up, Corey. For the record, call out of Lincoln Cab. Uh, I want a little bit different ideas in terms of two two one two 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 three on the early late split. Uh, I had several people approach me on the two two three through two two one through two two three early hunt. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bit more difficult. The Harvick, uh, the success on it's a, it's a little light. Uh, our cat kind of voted on 221 through 223 to move the early another week, so run it uh, to the 26th of October, and then throw the late hunt from the 27th through to the 5th. That's the adjustment that we recommended on the 1431. It gives, gives the early hunters an extra six days, and it gives the late hunters an extra four or five days. So kind of kind of combine that. That's the change we recommend. Okay, any other public comment? C could I make one comment yes, no. about this? And the guys that might want to comment here. First of all, we started out by telling you that the buck ratios are highest ever. They're over the top, and if we think we're going to stockpile bucks, they're just going to get bigger and older. That doesn't happen. They curl up and they die eventually. So we're, we're, we're losing opportunity. The other thing is that PIW and the auction tag, uh, Silver State tag or whatever, we're talking 20? I mean, 30 ish tag. So I just want to put things in perspective. Yeah, PIW is uh, PIW 25. And you throw in the dream tag, silver state tag, heritage tags, and then and then they're also concerned about the landowner tags in some of these areas that load these areas up too late in the season. So we're talking maybe 40 deer. I mean, it. it I, a lot of people call me on this, and I understand what you're saying, but they're worried about the stacking towards the end of the season and, and the number of add-on tags we have now. The, I, the, just you need to think about the biological effect of that is. We're not going to kill all the bucks. They tried to do it in the George Reserve. They couldn't do it. So I, I'm just saying there's opportunity. It's going to get curl up and die. And I just need to think about We're finally getting to the point where we've got a truncated population we need to deal with sooner or later. And being conservative, conservative, conservative just hurts the hunters in the long run because of a misconception, quite frankly, that we're going to kill all the big bucks. And those big bucks got big by not being stupid. So, um, we'll go ahead, Commissioner Drew. Just one point to bring out uh, in looking at some of the cab minutes, and I'm, I didn't see anyone from Story County here, but their recommendation on 195, and I know this was a big deal for them, uh, was to go October. They wanted to hunt in October, so I'm, I'm going to speak a little bit for them and say, you know, like an October 5th through 31st hunt. <coughs> rather than the proposed November hunt. I know they've talked about that in their last two committee meetings. Okay, um, uh, <clears throat> I, I've, got a, I've got a problem with the proposal on the, uh, uh, that White Pine County is making the 111, 113 late, 114, 115 late, the 121 late, uh, 131, 134 late, and the 221, 223 late. When we set these seasons up, uh, originally, uh, the idea was to uh, split the seasons and create a, uh, a, a limited trophy uh, hunt uh, that was, a, I believe, a 90-10 split. 
Uh, and so the very purpose of it was to uh, create a trophy uh, opportunity. And, and if you see uh, how people apply for these tags, uh, I can tell you that there's a tremendous amount of demand, you know, for this, you know, for these hunts. And so, uh, and any radical change, you know, without, uh, you know, without going out and getting, uh, you know, additional uh, input from the, from the cabs or anybody else, I, I, I struggle with that. So um, I, I can't support that change, uh, uh, that part of the uh, uh, discussion uh, on any modification of those. Okay, that being the case, um, uh, I guess we've heard everything. Um, Bring to the commission. Anybody has a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay, go ahead. I'll make a motion. Resident, non resident, uh, <coughs> antlered hunt 1331. We take department recommendations with the one exception of being 195, move it back to the October date uh, as uh, wanted by Story County. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Commissioner Reigns. Um, yeah, just briefly, the concerns that White Pine County has and others have, I think, are best addressed in quota setting. Um, we've adjusted ratios 95-5 in some cases to deal with that, and so there's other remedies rather than just striking the season. Thank you. Okay, that's a good point. Uh, Commissioner Drew. Just one clarification and then a point. Um, on, in terms of Jack's motion, I'm assuming the October dates would be the 5th through the 31st Correct. of October, so I wanted to be clear on that. Uh, in terms of the PIW tag issue, um, I understand there's a concern there, especially when you look at the special situation like 24 late that's got a lot of private landowner tags on it. I mean, the other option that this commission has is to look at cutting back on some of those PIW opportunities as well. I mean, let's not limit ourselves to what we can and cannot do. So just throwing that out there is another option as well. And, and to follow up on Jeremy's comment about the Silver State tag, PIW tags, whatever tags are out there, we have a tag allocation committee coming up, and I believe that's one go going to be one of the first things we're going to address because we keep hearing about it. So I, I've got some ideas. I want to hear other people's ideas. I think we have some solutions that will address a lot of this issue. Okay. Uh, any other comments from the commission? Okay, seeing none, uh, I've got a motion and a second. Uh, um, and uh, the motion is to accept um, the uh, department's uh, recommendations with, uh, uh, and, and is it just, is it all of the 192, nope. 94, 96, or 95, or is it just one? Just 195. Just 195, okay. Um, so just changing unit 195 uh, from uh, November, 5th to, uh, November 30th to October 5th to the 31st. Okay, that being the motion, everybody understand the motion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Then motion passes. Uh, the next hunt is